how important yeah. is it for somebody to be protected in that regards? Like, like, uh, have you seen people get sued when things happen at their properties? And uh, what are some of those uh, stories that maybe you could uh, share with us? Yeah, absolutely. But before I jump into that, I, I want to just touch on something really quick that you had mentioned, because I think it may be really valuable for the audience members in, in terms of your uh, specific fix and flip business. Um, it where, where, where your volume of transactions are doesn't justify the changeover. So I want to talk about really quick what those metrics are, or at least what we advise clients on uh, when they're that. on that side of that business. And then I'll jump into some of the liability stuff because some crazy things have happened. So determining whether or not it makes sense to trans, uh, to make the election to be treated as an S corporation. Um, you have to understand the extra compliance that comes along with it. Usually, one, you're going to have to um, have an extra tax return that's filed every year. So you got to factor in the cost. And most places are 750 to 1200 bucks. Mm -hmm. You need to have a very good set of books. So either you're doing it yourself or you're paying someone to do your bookkeeping, but that's usually going to run a couple thousand dollars a year. Uh -huh. And then you also have to have the officer compensation and payroll, which typically takes on an additional cost. And so all in on a conservative side, you're looking at three to six thousand dollars a year in compliance costs to have us after S corporation. Now you compare that with the tax savings that you'll get when you make the transition. Our magic number has been somewhere around forty to fifty thousand dollars of net income. It makes sense to go ahead and make the transition. Of course, anything above that is kind of a slam dunk, uh, but that's that's really what you'll want to look at. You know, the extra cost that I have to take on three, four, five thousand dollars a year. Will I get three, four, five thousand dollars in tax savings by doing this? Uh, if you don't, then it typically doesn't make sense because it's it's kind of net net. And if you do, then it's a no brainer. So. Um, Hopefully that's helpful to, to someone out there. But your your question about liability, this is one of the things where I say all the time, tax and legal must have open doors of communication. Mm -hmm. So for investors out there, for business owners out there that are building their team of advisors, make sure your attorney and your CPA, EA or accountant always have communication to talk to each other because as they're making recommendations, one all typically uh, impacts the other. So liability protection, when, when you have the uh, uh, real estate and, and the LLC, what, what you're typically exposing is your equity inside of the property. OK, mm -hmm. so hundred thousand dollar property, you put X amount down, you've owned it and you've built up some equity in it. Someone slips and falls. Sure, you may have mm -hmm. a insurance policy that covers you. But what happens if they just so happen to have a. A savvy or maybe even an overzealous attorney who wants to try to find a way to punch through that policy and take you for everything that you've got. If you own it inside of the entity, well, just the entity is exposed, right? Limited liability. There, that's the name. If you own that personally, well, now your personal assets are exposed. That's you. That's your bank account. That's your personal home that you own. All these other things that you have under your name could be exposed. And that's why you want that LLC there to provide a buffer between you as the individual and the operations of the business. And the same is true going the other way. What if you as the individual do something goofy and now you've exposed the, you know, if things aren't set up appropriately, you now expose the operations of the business or the assets that you own that are for business purposes. So that LLC provides a lot of liability protection. So I'm not an attorney, don't pretend to be one, but that uh, when I talk to my attorney friends, that's usually what they're what they're discussing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. And a lot of people a lot of times don't think about that. You know, they don't think about the liability or they think that that will never happen to them or that it's never happened to somebody. But the reality is it does happen. And it is something to a have a really good policy and then b make sure.